get more power out of your solar panels or your solar array than you can with over paneling itself. It's not an inverter. There's no fallacy there. Hey folks, I created quite the firestorm with my last video, so I thought I would create another one. No, seriously, in my last video, I talked about over paneling and why I don't do it. And I gave some options as to what you could do rather than over paneling or also why you might do it. But today I wanna to talk a little bit more about it and I wanna tell you how to get more power out of your solar panels or your solar array than you can with over paneling itself. So let's talk about why people over panel and what it is and then I'll tell you what I think that you should do. So first, let's talk about the components of an off-grid solar power setup. Now, I am talking off-grid here, not grid tie. So from an off-grid power perspective, you're actually using a battery bank to provide the power for your cabin, your house, your RV, your tent, whatever it is you're providing power to. It's the batteries that do that, not solar panels. Solar panels are just part of the charging system for those batteries. And you can have multiple ways of charging the batteries, but let's just talk solar today. So you've got a battery bank that you've determined is the right size to provide all the power you need when the sun's not shining. And then you have a system to charge up those batteries and that is your solar power setup. And there are really two main components to what that solar charging system is. One is the obvious one, the solar panels. But you can't just plug solar panels directly into your battery. That won't work because solar panels voltage varies depending on how much sun is hitting them, depending on how many cells they have in each panel. You'll notice that some solar panels are big and some are small and so on. Every solar panel is rated in the amount of voltage that it can put out. It'll have a couple voltage ratings, one which is really the working voltage and one which is the open voltage. But those ratings, by the way, are based on some very specific things. One, perfect alignment to the sun. The panel is perpendicular to the sun at just the right angle in azimuth and the temperature is the same as under testing, which would be typically 70 degrees. If it were hotter out, you're not gonna get as much power, and if it's colder, you could get more. So if a panel is rated at 100 watts, 20 volts and five amps, that's at 70 degrees, perfectly aimed at the sun, no obstructions, clear, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But that panel could read five volts, 10 volts, 15 volts. Voltage is going to range depending on the sun, the temperature, the angles, all those things. And the amount of power it puts out and, and power in wattage is simply a function of amperage times voltage. So five times 20 equals 100. That's how you get 100 watts on a solar panel that's 20 volts and five amps. So because that voltage is gonna vary and it may be too low or too high for your battery banks, you need something to control that and that is a charge controller, often called a solar charge controller. It's not an inverter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not anything but a charge controller. You will see these all-in-one systems where they'll say it's an inverter, they'll call it an inverter. That's not what an inverter does. Those all-in-one systems have a built-in charge controller, and this is the exact same thing for power stations. So if you're a power station viewer and you're watching this video, well, it's the same thing. Your power station may have an inverter and a battery and everything else, but it's really just a self-contained off-grid system. It's got a charge controller, that's the solar input. That charge controller takes that voltage that can go up and down and vary throughout the day, and it converts it to the correct voltage for your batteries that, that you have programmed it for. Okay, so now we've talked about charge controllers, and now you know that you have solar panels, and they connect to a charge controller, and the charge controller manages the charging of the battery bank that you live off of, and that could be a power station, or it could be like me with a cabin in the woods, and you got you know, a little over nine kilowatts of batteries, that's what that charge controller does. So let's go back to over paneling. Over paneling is the theory that if you could put more power in your panels, i.e. more wattage on your panels, than your charge controller is rated for, that you can get more power out of your panels in low light conditions than you would otherwise get. Now the way this theory works is you have what we commonly call solar noon or peak solar or there's different expressions for it, but there's that point in time, we think of it as straight up, where the sun is perfectly aligned with your solar panels and you've got peak power. But that point in time is a very brief period, maybe 45 minutes. 
So the sun is up in the sky and it, boom, it hits those panels. And as it travels across the sky, you've got that short window of full peak power. So if you put in a 2000 watt solar array and you run those solar panels into a solar charge controller that's rated at 2000 watts, then that charge controller can hit that 2000 watts at peak solar. But before peak solar, maybe an hour before, it might only be at 1800 watts or 16 or 1700 watts in perfect conditions because the sun is not perfectly aligned at those panels yet. It won't hit peak until it hits right at that point where you've got that window that it's perfectly aligned to your solar panels. That's the only time you can get peak in theory. Of course, colder temperatures, you could hit it earlier, but that's because you're gonna produce more power. Now the concept of over paneling is that if you just added between 10 and 15% more solar power to the array, so a 2000 watt array, if you were to say add 200 to 300 watts of solar to that array, but not go over on your voltage, you would hit that 2000 watts before peak solar. Well, and that is true, the concept is correct. If you have a 2000 watt array, you're not gonna hit 2000 watts until you're at peak solar. But if you add two or 300 watts to that array, you're gonna hit 2000 watts earlier in the cycle. The sun isn't gonna be at peak solar yet, but you're gonna get that 2000 watts because you've got 2300 watts. What happens at peak solar? Well, one, one of two things. A, your solar panels produce the full power they can get all things considered equal, right? Everything's perfect and the, the, everything, all the stars are aligned correctly in the world and the good Lord is shining down on you and you're gonna get maximum power, then you will get the full 2,300 watts if that's what you built. It's true. However, your charge controller is limited to 2,000 and so it clips that top off and you still only get 2,000. Now the theory behind this is that since you hit 2000 watts earlier in the day and you'll hold it till later in the day that you'll have a 2000 watt full charge going into your batteries for a longer period of time. This is correct. There's nothing there that tells me that that's incorrect. There's no, there's no fallacy there. But there is a problem with that. And let's think about this for a minute. Setting aside everything I said in my last video about adding more arrays and more panels and more charge controllers, let's just look at this one scenario. 2000 watts of solar, a 2000 watt charge controller, you add 300 watts to that 15% to your array so that you can hit 2000 watts of charging power earlier in the day and then hold it for that long period until the sun dips too far. Yes, you will hold that 2000 watts longer, absolutely correct. And if you never get to peak solar, let's say you only get to a point where you only hit 2000 watts total, your panels never even get to 2300, well, of course, then you're not gonna lose any power. They'll produce what they produce. And what I'm about to tell you would be no different. So here's what I'm gonna tell you about how to get more power out of your panels. Put in a bigger charge controller. It's not that complicated. Yes, if I put in a bigger charge controller and my panels don't get enough sun to generate the full 2300 watts, well, I'm not gonna get 2300 watts. But if the sun does, then I will. Hitting 2000 watts earlier, I'll still do that, but instead of clipping off all the power all across that period of time, it might be three or four hours of solar production, guess what? If I put in a 2500 watt controller, I'll get that full 2300 watts when I hit peak. I'm not losing it, I still get it. And if it's a colder day and I hit 2500 watts, I've got the charge controller to handle it. So when you over panel, what you're actually doing is you're putting a band-aid on instead of performing surgery. Sooner or later, you need to perform surgery. Put in a bigger charge controller. It's not gonna stop you from hitting that higher wattage earlier in the day because you added more to your solar array. All it's gonna do is allow you to get more power out of your solar panels when you get peak sun. If you've got 3,000 watts of solar and a 3,000 watt charge controller, can you get more than 3,000 watt production off of it? Well, not unless that charge controller can actually give you more than 3,000 watts. But if it stops at 3,000 and clips everything off, then no, you can't. And if it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit out, and it is super, super clear, and the sun hits those panels perfectly, and they produce 10% more power than they're rated for, which I've seen plenty of times, 
that instead of 3,000 watts, they're producing 3,300 and your charge controller can't take it and it won't. And you'll lose that additional 300 watts of charging in the middle of winter when you can use it the most. What would be better would be to put in a 3,500 watt charge controller that could handle more power than your solar array can provide you. Because your solar panels are still gonna produce the same bell curve of power. That's how solar panels work. The sun begins to hit the panels, they begin to warm up, they begin to generate power, and as the sun climbs through the sky throughout the day, they, they generate more and more and more and more and more power until they hit peak solar. And then they begin to drop off again as the sun continues to go across the sky until it goes down and you have no more solar production. So you have this curve like this. Sun hits it, you get peak solar, and then it drops off. If your charge controller is clipping the top 10 or 15%, put in a bigger charge controller. Now, I'm not saying that if you live in Seattle and it's cloudy 300 days a year, that putting in a bigger charge controller is gonna give you more power. Not unless your charge controller that you do have is clipping power that you are producing. If you put in 3,000 watts worth of solar panels and you're only generating 2,000 watts of power off of them because you live in rainy Portland, Oregon, but you put in a 1,500 watt charge controller, then you ain't getting 2,000 watts out of your 3,000 watt array. If you put in a 3,000 watt charge controller, frankly, I think it's too small. I like to size my charge controllers larger by at least 10%, if not 15 to 20%, than my solar array. Because particularly I'm running polycrystalline panels, which are known to actually create more power than they're rated to create. And my original solar panels, which were rated at 205 watts, and there are three of those in series, so they should produce 615 watts of power. Well, I've had them produce as much as 673 watts. That's like 109.5% of total production. And that was on a 70 degree day in September. It wasn't even in the middle of winter. And the only reason I even saw that is because frankly, I don't give myself analysis paralysis, which a lot of people do. I don't normally pay a lot of attention to what my panels are doing because I built my system well enough that I don't need to. If you're watching your solar array every single day and checking what you're producing day to day, then something's wrong. You probably didn't build it big enough. That means you're probably using more power than you're producing and you're trying to figure out what's going on. I don't do that. I put in my solar array and I walk away. But I happen to have a new charge controller that gives me some numbers real time that I can look at. I could have done that before with my old Morningstar that's sitting up here, but I'd have to log into it to do it. And my new one's got Bluetooth, so I can just pull it up on my phone and I go, oh look, I got 643 watts of power coming out of my 615 watt solar panels. Awesome. <laughs> So in the end, the theory behind over paneling is putting in more solar panel power and wattage than your solar charge controller is rated to handle. But you're losing that production. So there you have it, folks. If you want to get more power out of your solar arrays, stop over paneling, put in a bigger charge controller. I hope that helps somebody out. And by the way, thanks to all my members. I really appreciate your being here. Helps the channel out, keeps me motivated. Y'all have a great day. I will drop another video right here for you to check out. Appreciate you watching, folks. The old jar hit out.